The scripture reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Thank you, brother. Good morning. Faith is the victory. We're going to talk about faith this morning. A great song we sang. Let's discuss a little bit about faith. Let's, let's talk about what is faith. And then what, is, what exactly is it? And then let's talk a little bit about you know, a few examples of what faith is also. That's a stirring gospel song that tells us that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And it is. The faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith that we have, a gift also that we're given. What a great what a great thing that we can rejoice in is Christianity and our faith and what all that it is and what all that it encompasses. Our scriptures that we have and the life that we live also with the Bible in our scriptures, what all Jesus has done for us, a, a great thing that we have, fantastic, splendid thing that we have is our faith. And what victory that we can say that we have. We're not, we're not losers but conquerors we're given in the scriptures, conquerors. And we're conquerors through our faith and what Jesus has given us with our faith. And we learn in Hebrews chapter 11, as our brother read to us, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When we ask, what exactly is faith? And a lot of things are hard to define, but our Bible, our scripture, gives us a definition of what faith and what, what faith is. Now the faith is the substance. Substance is something that can be witnessed or weighed or or measured, or, or, or done something with. A substance is something that you can almost see, a substance. A product of hope, it also says. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. A substance. A substance. And evidence also. A faith is evidence. It says, the evidence of things not seen. And things not seen, we discussed a lot about things not seen. Remember our lesson where we talked about the invisible God, and about God being invisible? But our faith doesn't have to be invisible. Our faith is actually in a substance and an evidence. You can see it through your life and how you live your life. You can see your faith. Faith without works is dead, James says. It's true. You can see faith. You can see it. But it's evidence of things not seen. Another thing that we discussed about what's not seen that's invisible is our hope. Is our hope. And we have a hope for heaven. We have that hope. And with that hope, we exercise our faith, and we, we show it. We show our faith. And evidence is the available body of facts. An available body of facts. Or information indicating whether a belief or a proposition is true or valid. I've debated a lot about evidence in court. I've, I've had evidence which I've collected, and I've seen and photographed and brought into court, and had a defense try to tear it apart, and then had the prosecution try to, try to show that it is valid. And then me be caught in the middle. And then question me about what evidence I collected on the scene. I'll assure you evidence is something that can be seen, measured, and weighed, and debated on. Evidence. An evidence. Faith is an evidence. And our faith is a substance and an evidence of our religion. Without faith, we cannot please our Jehovah God. Continue in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter six, chapter 11 and verse 6. We have to have faith. However, faith is much more than just a mere step in our plan of salvation, remaining faithful. But faith is that substance, that power that motivates the Christian's entire being. This indispensable item is acquired through the word of God as well. We acquire it through the word of God. We go to our Bibles again, which supports this statement in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. I say it a lot at the conclusion of, of all the lessons, and you'll hear it again at the end of this lesson. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God is how we acquire our faith, by the hearing of the word of God. Have the word preached to us from a preacher and taught to us by teachers and, or read, through us in our, read to us out of the scriptures, we then obtain our faith. 
And faith is so much more than just the, the mental assent or the acceptance of a deity. It's more than just a belief that what we label the word belief to be today. But belief in the first century goes hand in hand with, with obedience. You believe in something, you're going to obey it. You're going to believe in it. But now today we say that you just have to have faith. And a lot of people misinterpret what that meaning is. But having faith is, is more than just a mental accepting, acceptance of Jesus. It's actual, it's actual evidence and substance that is seen. Evidence of things not seen. It grows in proportion to our zeal and enthusiasm also. In, 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 in our spiritual enlightenment. The more we read our scriptures, the more that we dig in our Bibles. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We can strengthen our faith by studying our scriptures and going over our word, attending services regularly, going home and listening to other services as well, always encompassing your life with your faith. You will strengthen yourself. Have more good, way more good than bad. Focus on Jesus through all your life and what you do. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There have been many great heroes of faith in our Bible. And in Hebrews chapter 11, we, get, we give many examples of that. We have, we have Enoch who walked with God. Moses who led the people of God also. What all Moses did in their scriptures by faith. You see what he did. You can measure what he did. It was a substance of what Moses did. Joshua who provided Israel with 50 years of peace. We see what Joshua did in the scriptures. We see his faith displayed for us forever in the word. How about Samuel, the prophet, a courageous prophet? What all he did, Samuel in, in Hebrews chapter 11. All these men were given and referred to as, as men of valor in the faith. Men of valor because of what they did. Those today who are willing to wield that sword, that spiritual sword, and be behind that shield of faith, which is what Paul gives us in Ephesians chapter 6, of having the whole armor of God and the sword, our, our only weapon, which is the scripture. The Bible, when you read Hebrews chapter 6, 16 through 17, the whole armor of God. And that sword is our scriptures. And that sword is a weapon for close combat, isn't it? Sword, a valuable weapon that we have to have. Make sure you have your sword on you. And if you don't have it on you, keep it in your heart. Keep it in your heart. The more you read your scriptures, the more you maintain your study, the more that you're able to store them within you and that you can continue to grow in your faith. By having that, whenever your, your sword might not be ready right there with you, carried along your side. You can store it in your heart, and you can store it in your mind. We can be conquerors for the Lord, even as the heroes of the past. Brethren, we should begin to realize that faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. And it overcomes things such as atheism and skepticism and doubt. Faith can overcome those things. Faith is a victory. There's a lot of fools that say that there is no God, and fools is a strong word to use, but it's what our scripture calls them. In Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1, it says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works, and there is none who does good. Psalmist writes, chapter 14 and verse 1. Hundreds believe that humans have come to be from the line of monkeys thousands believe and question the reliability of the bible and millions deny that jesus arose from deny that he rose from the dead they deny it they say it didn't occur that jesus never existed and when you ask what is the only answer that can for such emptiness that comes with all that what is the only answer that gives us that can remove that emptiness that we're that that the thing that removes Jehovah's is our God's enriching influence. And what, what can replace that nothingness? Well, the answer is faith. Our faith can replace that nothingness. Imagine whenever you were without belief before you became a Christian about how empty you felt, how lost you were, both spiritually and mentally, how lost it was. But then when you found God, how, how full and enriched you now are. And how you can rejoice. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. And one, all the ones that, that have gone through that, which is all of us that are sitting here, that were once were not Christian, have felt that feeling. Faith is that answer. Romans chapter 1 and 17 says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Paul gives us, says that, 
in the for it for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. We've seen the examples in Hebrews chapter eleven that were given about all the faith and all the works that they did before us. How the examples that we have and how God's righteousness is revealed to us through faith. We see the faith of our Old Testament scriptures. And from God, he was faithful in his promises also. So we must be faithful in ours. If God is faithful with his promises, we should be faithful too. And remain faithful. Revealed from faith to faith. And the just shall live by faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, a favorite scripture of mine is, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. I remember whenever I went to leave my last profession, they had a sit-down with me. You sure you want to do this? You know what all you're risking. You know what all you're losing. What all, what all you could have. What all this you're giving up. Don't do this. It's foolish of you to do this. I don't, you don't have a security that you have that you have with us. I quoted in this scripture. I said, for we walk by faith, not by sight. You don't understand what I feel. And what I know, that I have faith in my Lord, and that he will take care of me, and, and how he has, and how he has, how great he is, if we just display the faith, and keep that faith. Great scripture to keep in your back pocket, for we walk by faith, not by sight. When it doesn't make sense, do the right thing anyway. Walk by faith, not by sight. The wrath of God is reserved also for those who deny the self-evident, what's given to us. Romans in chapter 1, again, Paul, he talks about how God and what all God has instowed and how man tries to get away from what God has instowed and what God has set in place. But God's wrath is revealed to us through his creation. We can see his power in his creation. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. It is revealed to us. We have great lessons this on, on Wednesdays. You all should come and, and see and, and listen to the teachings about how our creation, what all the stars and the moons and, and what all we have in the universe and how great the expanse is that's out there and how that itself reveals if God is that powerful, how amazing he is, how we can't comprehend it, how space is continual and everlasting space and the distances and all that what is, exists in our universe. He says that it is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who, su who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And man will try to do that. Man will try to suppress the truth. It doesn't make sense to them because God's given them over to a base mind. They, they want to live in their sin. They want to live and be amongst the world. So they've just come to accept it. And then now they want to suppress the truth. They just want to suppress the truth. Because that may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has shown it to them. And God has shown us his power. We have seen it. We see it in his creation. We see it in his scripture. The faith displayed by the ones before us. We see his power and what all he's capable of doing. With Moses and how he delivered the Israelites out of the bondage of Pharaoh and parted the Red Sea and water on both sides and dry soil on the ground for them to walk across. How, the God's power that he has and that he's given to us in the scriptures. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. The heavens display God's power and reveal the power behind his wrath. If, we can, if he can do all this, if he can do all this, imagine his wrath. Imagine what he's capable of. Psalms 19 and 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show his handiwork. Psalm 8 and 3 and 4, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, this will make you smell, feel small. The moon and the stars, when you consider his handiwork, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. When the psalmist writes here, it says, this whole, all this creation in which you have, which he's given us, how great it is. What, what, what am I? when you think of it in, in comparison. I can't help but feel small when I read this and when I think about it, when I see how great God's creation is. But, but God loves us a lot. And there's nothing small about God's love for you. Nothing small about that. 
God made all this for us now to subdue it in the creation account. He's given it to us. And it declares, it reveals to us His power and His mighty and how great He is. And that should increase your faith when you read those scriptures, when you go over it. Whenever you see how great God is in His creation, that should work. Faith is a victory that overcomes also worry, anxiety, and fear. I want to give a few examples of faith. So what we say, what faith is. What faith is, not what is faith, because we've talked about what is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11 and 1. So now, what faith is. And there's many examples of what faith is. And we're going to just talk about a few of them. Faith is the victory that overcomes worry, anxiety, and fear. If you experience this, you're not alone. You're not alone. Every one of us here have experienced worry, anxiety, and fear. You're not at all alone with that experience. 20.6% of U.S. adults experienced mental illness in 2019. That's a lot of people. That's 51.5 million people. That's one in five adults. One in five adults that experienced mental illness in 2019. That has increased in, in 2020. 5.2% of U.S. adults experienced serious mental illness in 2019. That's, that's over 13 million people in the United States. This represents one in 20 adults that suffer from a serious mental illness in 2019. You're not alone if, if you suffer from this. Sixteen and a half of U.S. young aged, a young age from ages 6 to 17 experience a mental health disorder in 2016. That's 7.7 million. If you're, if you're a young person and you suffer from worry, anxiety, and fear, you're not alone. You're not alone there either. 3.8% of U.S. adults experience a co-occurring substance use disorder. Mental illness in 2019. That's nine and a half million people. That's, that's a mental health disorder along with a substance abuse disorder at the same time. Nine and a half million people. We see that tranquilizers and barbiturates and pills in some places, in some incidents, they have taken the place of faith in God in many instances. And I'm not limiting the need or practice of medical attention. That is a necessity. That has to be done. There are trained professionals that, that will help and medicate when it's needed to be. But don't forget your faith as well. That is an important medicine as well. That is a very important medicine. And I'd argue as your preacher, that is the most important medicine. Your faith. Still visit your doctors. Still do those things. Still do that. You're not alone in that. But you need to make sure that you're taking a heavy dose of faith as well. Along with those. Along with those. The only real peace is that which emanates from the Father above. That's where your peace, that's the true peace what comes from. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. Pray to God. Pray to Him. That will work your faith as well. And it says in verse 7, it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, the peace of God, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Your faith will help you through your worry and anxiety and your fear. Your faith will certainly help you in that. Certainly will. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. He will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus. Faith conquering mental distress is is not just saying pray harder, and that's not what I'm saying. Just pray harder. How many times have you heard that? Just pray harder. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying pray harder and work harder. Remember your faith, whenever we're saying about is the substance, is the substance and the evidence. Remember faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Don't give up like many people do when they just give up because of their anxieties and their fear and how tragic it is whenever they give up. Don't give up. Work. And I know that you are. Ask with faith means that you work towards a better future. And James 1 and 6 says, but let him ask in faith. When you're asking this prayer, when we looked at Philippians 4 and verse 6 about pray to God, whenever you pray, but ask in faith, in faith when you have these prayers. With no doubting, James says. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. When you pray to God, mean it when you're praying to him. 
you're talking to the creator, the ones that, that created the whole universe like we discussed in the scriptures and in the Psalms. That that's who you're talking to. That's the Lord Almighty is who you're talking with. Talk to him with faith. He has power. He has the control. James also teaches us to find joy through trials, such as worry, anxiety, and fear. James 1, 2 through 3. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. This is another one of those scriptures that... Joy? Where can I find joy and worry, anxiety, and trials. How is that even possible? Foolishness, people of the world would say. Foolishness. But we're spiritual-minded people. We think of the spiritual things, not the carnal things, but the spiritual things. He talks about joy. And this is a, a different type of joy than what you might imagine. This is not the joy of jumping up and down. I'm happy that I'm going through this trial. I'm joyous for it. That's, that's not what is going on here. You don't have to feel guilty for being upset or feeling upset whenever you're going through a trial. You don't have to feel guilty for that. It's okay sometimes to not be okay. It's part of life. It's part of life. And I'm not talking about sin, saying that it's okay not to be okay. I'm talking about mentally with worry and anxiety and fear. Sometimes it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to be upset when you're going through worry, anxiety, and fear. Be angry and sin not, we're also told. But one that was upset, and when we think about joy and trial, I wonder about Jesus. Do we see the joy in Jesus before his crucifixion, before he went to the cross? Do you see any joy there? What, what I seen was a joy, but it's a different type of joy that the world would not really define as joy. I saw, I saw Jesus when he, that he prayed a lot. He wept blood, he sweated, he worried. He was worried. He was afraid. He was angry. He was mad because his disciples would sleep while he was praying. He was mad. He went through a lot of different emotions while he was preparing himself to be murdered. Count it as joy? Jesus wasn't happy when he was joyful of the when he when he wasn't happy about it. He wasn't happy at all about it. But he was joyful for the opportunity to, opportunity to faithfully serve God. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's a different kind of joy when you're going through trials. It's a joy knowing that when you get through it, that God is strengthening you while you're going through the trial. It's a joy knowing that it would be better whenever it's over. That's the joy. It's not necessarily jumping for joy while you're going through the difficulty. That's not what's going on there. It's the joy that Jesus experienced. He was happy to do that for us, but he wasn't happy to be going through that suffering. It was a joy for him to do it, but he wasn't joyful about it. It's kind of a hard thing to understand or to say in our, or express in our way of speaking but I hope you understand. Faith is also the victory that overcomes small plans in the Lord's work. The church in Philadelphia of Asia and had an open door of opportunity to perform the Lord's work. In Revelation 3 and verse 8, it says, I know your works, see, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a, a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Any church whose faith produces zeal, will experience the same blessing, have an open door. And a lack of trusting faith will produce a Sardis and Leo and church of Laodicea who, who did not. When brethren are afraid to launch out into the, deep, into the deep spiritually, they are digging their own graveyard in Satan's cemetery. We need to be working for Jesus. We have an open door to the world to proclaim the truth, and we need to be doing it. need to be doing it. Unless we are constantly going... On unto perfection we are becoming stagnant. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 it says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of the faith towards God. And that's the Hebrew writing, writer talking about them not wanting to return back to the old law and the bondage of sin. But he said, let us go on to perfection, 
Let us keep moving to the next, next step on the, on, the, on the stairway to excellence. Let's work towards it. We can't be perfect, but we can work and try to strive to be that. Do not be afraid to do the work of the Lord. Rather, fear not doing it, actually. 2 Peter 3 and 18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both forever, both now and forever. And amen. Optimism stems from faith, and the pessimism is born from doubt. There are far too many brethren who just keep house for the Lord. And there are few indeed who plan to plan very far ahead in the Master's work. Faith never says it can't be done. It can't be done. Faith is a victory that overcomes small works in the church. Faith is also the victory that overcomes the pangs of death. And the pangs is that sharp attack or mental anguish of death. 1 Corinthians 15 and 54. It says, So when this corruptible has put, in, put on incorruptible, or incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Faith in life of a devout Christian causes him to approach the evening shades of, of death and time with a calm and assurance that is well with his soul. Death has no sting and the grave holds no victory with a Christian. And to the triumph of, it's a triumph of a saint having fought the good fight. In Timothy 6 and 12, Paul saying, I fought, he fought the good fight of faith laying hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Again, death has no hold on us Christians. In 2 Timothy 4 and 18, And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Have faith that God will deliver you from the evil and, the, and have deliver you from the evil. Faith overcomes the fears of death, it can. We can go home and be with Christ, Philippians 1 and 23. For I am hard-pressed between the two, having desired to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Paul saying, that, Paul saying that he would rather go home to Christ. To live is Christ and to die is gain, he also says. This hope of heaven swells even higher in our Christian hearts. Hebrews 6 and 19. This hope we have, this hope we have, as an anchor, as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. An anchor, an anchor, something that you can lock onto and keep you sturdy and steady whenever the, whenever the, sh the currents of life want to take you elsewhere. As an anchor for the soul, because he had added to his faith the necessary virtues. And the necessary virtues in 2 Peter 1, 4 through 11, he gives us several. In verse 5, but also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And a brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound you, will be neither barren nor unfruitful in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sin. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an inheritance will be supplied to you abundantly into everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have an abundant entrance shall be granted to the Christian into the everlasting, everlasting kingdom. The darkness of death and the gloom and the tomb are eased from our minds with faith. Thus the song of praise on the saints' lips as death approaches, for truly blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Revelations 14 and 13. Then I heard a voice from the heavens saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die and the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest for their labors and their works follow them. Blessed. Do you have this faith? Do you have this faith? Did you once possess it and then 
and become shipwrecked of it and not have it anymore. May God help us to see the importance of the victorious faith that overcomes the world, as our song sang. Let us increase in faith and knowledge and godliness so that when, when faith becomes sight and hope is turned into reality, we may share in God's blissful love that shall never fade. Faith is the victory that can overcome the world. Hear the gospel preached, Romans ten seventeen. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Believe in Jesus as God's Son, Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Repent of sins, in Acts 17, 30. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Confess faith in Christ, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And be baptized. Acts 2 and 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This scripture meant a lot to me. It says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. It's how you have remission of sins. It's how your sins are washed away, Acts 22 and 16 also says. And we need to remain faithful. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. James 1.12. If you need to respond, please do so while we stand and while we sing.